On an ordinary day, a dedicated and loving man, father of three daughters, comes across an unexpected scene. A millionaire, in an act of disregard, throws a mysterious box into the trash. Upon opening the object, he is engulfed by a wave of despair that shakes the foundations of his life. What is inside the box could change everything, but at what cost? A journey of revelations, dilemmas and difficult choices begins, challenging his values and the love he has for his family. Hello my friends, I am Linda and this is the Linda Stories channel. I hope you enjoy this story. Daniel watched the cloudy sky as he walked through the park with his three young daughters. The cold autumn wind stirred the dry leaves on the ground, creating a colourful carpet under their feet. His rough, calloused hands from hard work held firmly the tiny hands of his two younger daughters, while the oldest, seven years old, skipped a few steps ahead. At 44, Daniel bore the weight of widowhood and the responsibility of raising three children alone. His face, marked with lines of worry, still maintained a glimmer of kindness in his brown eyes. He wore simple, somewhat worn clothes, reflecting the financial difficulties he faced, but his warm smile made up for any modest appearance. The girls, oblivious to their father's worries, laughed and played. The eldest, Sophia, had her mother's brown hair and Daniel's restless curiosity. The five-year-old twins, Lily and Rose, were like two peas in a pod, with golden curls and blue eyes that reminded one of the sky on sunny days. Daniel watched them with a mix of love and concern. Since his wife's death two years ago, he had been juggling two jobs to maintain the small apartment where they lived and to ensure his daughters had what they needed. The nights were short, the days long, but the love for his girls kept him strong. While the children ran towards the swings, Daniel sat on a nearby bench, allowing himself a moment of rest. His eyes scanned the park, observing other families, elderly couples walking hand in hand and young people strolling with their dogs. It was then that something unusual caught his attention. A woman with chic dark sunglasses and well-dressed was approaching a nearby trash can. The jewellery she wore contrasted with the simple park environment, but something about her appearance indicated that something was wrong. With quick and stealthy movements, she deposited a cardboard box in the trash can and hurriedly walked away. Intrigued, Daniel stood up. Something about that scene disturbed him. He called his daughters, asking them to stay close to the bench, and walked towards the trash can. As he approached, a faint, almost imperceptible sound made his heart race. He opened the lid of the trash can and with trembling hands retrieved the box. What he saw inside made his blood run cold. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. It was a baby that seemed to be only a few days old, with pale skin, unclothed and wrapped in a thin blanket. The child barely moved with its small eyes closed. Without a second thought, Daniel took the baby in his arms, wrapping it in his own coat. He looked around, desperate, and saw the woman who had left the box quickly walking away. With his heart pounding, he shouted for his daughters to stay where they were and ran after the woman. Wait, please stop, he called, gasping. The woman turned, her eyes wide with fear and surprise. She was an imposing figure, with delicate features and perfectly arranged blonde hair. Her name was Emma, though Daniel did not know it yet. What do you want? She asked, her voice trembling slightly. Daniel, still holding the baby, replied, This baby. Why did you abandon him? He needs help. Emma looked around nervously, as if she feared being watched. Her expression changed from fear to anger. That's none of your business, she hissed. If you tell anyone, I will end your life and the baby's. The threat took Daniel by surprise. He stepped back, instinctively protecting the child in his arms. Emma seized the moment to turn and run, quickly disappearing among the trees in the park. Daniel was paralysed for a few seconds, his heart pounding in his chest. The reality of the situation hit him like a punch. He had an abandoned baby in his arms and had been threatened by a stranger. Fear and confusion battled against his sense of duty and compassion. At quickly returning to where his daughters were waiting, Daniel tried to stay calm. 
The girls looked curiously at the small bundle in his arms. Daddy, what is that? asked Sophia, her eyes wide with curiosity. Daniel took a deep breath. It's a baby who needs our help, sweetheart. Let's go home now, all right? The walk back to the apartment was tense. Daniel held the baby with one arm and guided his daughters with the other, his mind racing with thoughts about what to do. Once they arrived home, he quickly improvised a crib with a drawer lined with soft blankets. As the girls watched in fascination, Daniel carefully cleaned and warmed the baby. It was a boy, he noted, probably only a few days old. The child began to cry softly, a sound that was both a relief and a reminder of the gravity of the situation. Daddy, can we keep him? asked Lily, her blue eyes shining with hope. Daniel smiled sadly. No, my dear. This baby has a family somewhere that must be looking for him. With a small spoon, Daniel fed the baby warm milk, his heart tight with a mix of worry and determination. Emma's threat echoed in his mind, a persistent echo that would not leave him in peace. He knew he couldn't ignore what had happened. The baby needed medical care and, more importantly, protection. After putting his daughters to sleep, Daniel stayed awake, watching the small being sleeping next to him. He debated with himself, fighting against the fear that paralysed him. The right decision seemed obvious, but the consequences terrified him. What if the threat was real? What if, by taking action, he put his own daughters in danger? The hours dragged on, and the silence of the apartment was interrupted only by the soft murmurs of the baby. Daniel watched the child sleep, so fragile and defenceless, and couldn't help but remember the love he felt when his own daughters were born. How could someone abandon a being so small and vulnerable? As soon as he ensured that the child was well wrapped and safe, he decided to act. He called his sister to keep an eye on his daughters, who were already sleeping peacefully, while he took the baby to the police station. The police station building was imposing, with its red brick walls and large glass doors that seemed to reflect the gravity of the moment. Daniel entered hesitantly, holding the baby firmly in his arms, his daughters forming a line behind him. The interior was filled with police officers and civilians in motion, the atmosphere dense with the urgency of routine, and each of Daniel's steps seemed laden with a weight he never imagined having to bear. A police officer approached, noticing the concerned expression on Daniel's face and the baby in his arms. Can I help you, sir? He asked, his tone gentle but professional. Daniel took a deep breath and began to tell his story. He spoke about the park, the well-dressed woman, the box in the trash can. His voice trembled as he described the baby he found, almost frozen and hungry. The officer listened attentively, taking notes and occasionally casting worried glances at the child. As Daniel spoke, the movement in the police station seemed to slow down. Other officers approached, listening to the extraordinary story. The officer was about to ask more questions when the police station door suddenly opened. A man entered, his face a mask of anguish and despair. He looked around frantically until his eyes rested on the baby in Daniel's arms. My son, he shouted, running towards them. The police officer quickly positioned himself between the man and Daniel, asking for calm. The newcomer, panting and with tears in his eyes, introduced himself as Josh, Emma's husband. Please, Josh implored. This is my son. My wife. She's not well. She suffers from postpartum depression. I didn't know. I didn't imagine she would do something like this. The revelation hit the room like a bomb. Daniel looked at Josh, seeing not an enemy, but a man devastated by pain and worry. The police officer asked everyone to calm down and suggested they move to a more private room to discuss the situation. In the hours that followed, the full story came to light. Emma, a successful businesswoman, had faced a difficult pregnancy and a complicated delivery. What should have been a moment of joy turned into a nightmare of anxiety and depression. Unable to cope with the pressure and expectations of motherhood, she had spiralled downward, culminating in the terrible act of abandoning her child. 
Josh, with tears in his eyes, explained how he had desperately searched for Emma and the baby over the past 24 hours. He had no idea his wife had reached this point, and the guilt consumed him. Daniel listened silently, his heart heavy with the complexity of the situation. He looked at the baby in his arms, now sleeping peacefully, unaware of the drama surrounding him. The police officer, after hearing all sides of the story, suggested a plan of action. Emma would need immediate professional help, and the baby should be examined by doctors. Josh readily agreed, grateful for any guidance during that moment of crisis. While the procedures were being discussed, Daniel found himself reflecting on his own journey as a father, the loss of his wife, the daily struggles to raise his daughters alone, the moments of doubt and fear. He looked at Josh and saw a reflection of himself, a father struggling to keep his family together amidst the chaos. With kindness, Daniel approached Josh. I know we don't know each other, he said softly, but if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. Being a father isn't easy, especially when we face unexpected challenges. Josh looked at Daniel with gratitude, his eyes welling up. Thank you, he whispered. You saved my son. I can never thank you enough. There were more things behind what had happened. In the months following the baby's birth, Emma and Josh entered a cycle of anxiety and guilt. Emma, once outgoing, felt isolated and overwhelmed by emotional darkness. Josh tried to be strong, but the pressure of keeping up appearances while dealing with the disillusionment of parenthood left him exhausted. Communication between them had become scarce and silences dominated. Emma felt like a stranger in her own home, unable to share her feelings, while Josh hesitated to approach her, fearing he would do something wrong. Both were immersed in their own pains, not realising that the solution lay in opening up to each other and embracing their vulnerabilities. In the days that followed, a series of events unfolded. Emma was admitted for psychiatric treatment, facing her inner demons with the support of dedicated professionals. Josh divided his time between taking care of the baby and visiting his wife, finding strength in an unexpected support network. Daniel, against all odds, became an important part of this network. His regular visits to the hospital, always accompanied by his daughters, brought a ray of light to Emma's dark days. The girls, with their innocence and contagious joy, managed to elicit shy smiles from Emma, even in the most challenging moments. As the weeks passed, a gradual transformation occurred. Emma, with the appropriate treatment and the unconditional support of Josh and the new friendship with Daniel and his daughters, began to emerge from the darkness that had consumed her. She faced her fears and insecurities, learning to accept help and recognise her own inner strength. Josh, in turn, found in Daniel a friend and confidant. The nights when the two men talked about the challenges of fatherhood, sharing stories and advice, became a pillar of strength for both. Daniel, in helping Josh navigate the turbulent waters of new parenthood, found healing for his own emotional wounds. Josh decided to resume his professional life and proposed that Daniel, a talented construction worker, help him renovate his house. Daniel hesitated, but accepted the offer, looking for a job that valued him. Working alongside Josh, he not only gained a new source of income, but also the chance to showcase his talent, receiving praise for his work ethic and dedication. Over time, Daniel received other job offers, improving his finances and alleviating worries about providing for his daughters. Daniel's daughters became constant figures in the baby's life, whom they affectionately nicknamed Little Miracle. Sophia, Lily and Rose took on the role of protective older sisters, filling the baby's days with laughter and love. As the months passed, the story of that morning in the park became a turning point in the lives of everyone involved. Emma, after completing her treatment, returned home, facing the challenge of rebuilding her bond with her son and mending her marriage. Every small progress was celebrated, and every obstacle was overcome together. Daniel, observing the transformation of the family that he inadvertently helped save, felt a change within himself. The pain of losing his wife, although still present, no longer consumed him. 
he found new strength and purpose, not just as a father to his daughters, but as a friend and supporter to others facing their own battles. On a sunny afternoon, nearly a year after that fateful day in the park, the two families gathered for a picnic. The contrast with the cloudy day when it all began could not have been greater. Emma, now stronger and more confident, held her son in her arms, her eyes shining with maternal love. Josh, by her side, radiated pride and gratitude. Daniel watched the scene with his daughters, his heart full of a quiet joy. Sophia, always the most observant, tugged on his shirt sleeve. Daddy, she said softly, you did a very good thing, didn't you? Daniel smiled, hugging his daughter. We all did, sweetheart, he replied. Sometimes helping someone is the best way to help ourselves. As the children ran and played, the adults reflected on the journey that brought them there. Emma, with tears in her eyes, expressed her gratitude to Daniel. You didn't just save my son, she said. You saved us all. Josh nodded in agreement. You showed us the true meaning of compassion and strength, he added. Daniel, emotional, looked at the gathered group. His family expanded in a way he could never have imagined. We are all stronger together, he said simply. As the sun began to set, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, the two families remained united, a living testament to the power of compassion, resilience and unconditional love. The little miracle, now a laughing and healthy baby, was the centre of attention, a constant reminder of how life can flourish even under the most improbable circumstances. In that moment, under the evening sky, everyone understood that true families are not just those bonded by blood, but also those forged through adversity, understanding and mutual support. The journey that began with an act of desperation had transformed into a story of redemption, healing and renewed love. And so as the shadows lengthened and the first stars appeared in the sky, Daniel looked at his daughters, at Josh and Emma, and at the baby who had changed everyone's lives. He smiled, knowing that no matter what the future held, they would face it together, stronger because of the lessons learned and the unbreakable bond they had formed. The final lesson was clear. Even in the darkest moments, there is always hope. And sometimes, it is in the simplest acts of kindness and courage that we find the strength to start over, to heal and to grow. Their story was a testament to the transformative power of love, compassion and the second chances that everyone deserves. If you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with a number from 1 to 5 to let us know how much you liked the story. Also, watch the video that is currently on your screen. See you soon.